Okay, today we're going to be doing a roundworm dissection. And before you actually begin doing the roundworm dissection, I want you to take the roundworm and put it underneath a dissecting microscope. And I want you to look at the anterior end, and I want you to look at the posterior end. And I want you to notice the difference between those two ends. The anterior end is going to have this little tuft or lobes at that particular end where the mouth is located. And the posterior end will be missing. It'll be very smooth. So I want you to see if you can recognize both the ends. Now, when you actually begin the roundworm dissection, put your worm diagonally in the dissecting tray, and then go ahead and proceed to pin the worm. So we're going to start with two pins. One pin is going to go in vertically at the anterior end, and the other pin is going to go in vertically at the posterior end, like that. I'm now going to go ahead and use the scalpel, hold the scalpel like a pencil, and you want to use the very tip of the scalpel. So I'm going to point to the very tip of the scalpel, and I like to hold it vertically, like this, and a little bit of an angle. And I use the very tip of the scalpel to do my cutting. I'm going to make a very fine incision because if I go too deep, I'm going to start cutting through a lot of different structures. So it's better to be go light with the scalpel than to go too deep. I'm only going to cut about one inch at a time. And after I cut that one inch, I'm going to pin the skin back or reflect the skin back. And I'm going to put a pin in at about a 30 degree angle. And this way, I can look down from the top and see the structures that I want to identify. That's why I'm going to put the pins in at about a 30 degree angle. So let's go ahead and begin. Always cut away from your fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start near the anterior end. And I'm going to make a, a small incision. And I'm just going to cut maybe about an inch. At that point, I'm going to grab my forceps and I'm going to grab a pin. And I'm going to begin reflecting the skin back. Now the skin of the roundworm is very thin and delicate. They actually breathe through their skin in a process called cutaneous, uh, cutaneous respiration. So their skin needs to be very thin and moist for this to occur. Now that's about one inch. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue with my incision very gently. And again, I'm going to begin to reflect the skin backwards. And I'm going to grab the skin just a little bit there and continue cutting. And very gently I reflect the skin back with the forceps, being careful not to damage the internal organs. And as we're going to see, the roundworm is pretty much set up to do two things, eat and reproduce. So most of the structures we're going to see have to do with digestion and reproduction. I'm going to go just a little bit further, but you are going to want to go to the very end or to where the most posterior pin is located. So 
So that looks pretty good, at least for uh, this particular video. Now I'm going to look around, try to identify some different structures. Now the space located between the body wall, or the skin, and the actual organs, this space is the pseudocelum. And that's actually going to contain a little bit of fluid, and that fluid is going to be used uh, under pressure to create movement for this worm. Now we're going to try to take a look at some of the other structures. You see a lot of the fine spaghetti-like structures that I'm pointing to here. These are all oviducts. And they will get smaller and smaller and smaller into hair-like structures, which are going to be the ovaries. That's where the egg is actually produced. The egg is going to be produced in these hair-like structures called ovaries. The egg then travels through the oviducts, which are these larger spaghetti-like structures. And eventually the egg is going to reach uh, a uterus, two uteruses. And they're going to be larger round structures in here. I'm going to go and I can see them right there. I'm peeling away some of the oviducts to see the uterus. And there you can see one. They, they're very easy to damage. But this is going to be one uterus right here. And you can see the other uterus, which I've uh, actually damaged a little bit, right there. And if I continue my way down, just kind of moving these oviducts out of the way, you can see more clearly the two uteri. There's one right here, and there's the other one right there. And that is where fertilization of the egg actually takes place. From there, the fertilized egg is going to exit through a tiny little hole called the genital pore and then be deposited outside the female's body. Now, nearby is another structure. This structure tends to be flatter. In this structure, you can see it right there. I'm going to try to get underneath it. And there it is, right there. This sort of flat structure that actually goes from the anterior end all the way to the posterior end is the intestine. And we could actually continue to follow it all the way down. And in fact, I would encourage you to do that at different lengths along the worm. Try to find the ovary and try to find the intestine. Now the intestine is going to travel from the anterior end all the way to the posterior end, where the ovary will only travel maybe a third of the length of the worm or less. And those are the structures that I want you to see for the roundworm.